All right, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and blessings to the hopeful elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. Um, yeah, this is going to be a quick sit down, man. Um, Lord willing, through the Spirit, it will be edifying for you, Akim, out there listening in. Um, basically, to do with the way we come out and we teach the word, man. Alright, because a lot of you fucking effeminate faggots out there, you got a problem with the way that we teach the word. Or, you know, how, you know, some of you like to come up there and don't shout. Why are you shouting? Really and truly, man, look, the Lord says blow you the trumpet, man. In fact, let me get that first, man. Alright, uh, I believe it's in Joel, the second chapter. Uh, right, here you go. Joel 2 and 1, it says blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. But first and foremost, man, you know, you people like to go on like, you know, the, the one that the world calls Jesus Christ. Like he had a, a voice that was soft as uh, uh, baby oil, man. Like the scripture says that he had his, his voice was at the sound of many waters. All right. First and foremost, the Lord was teaching people. He was out there on the sea on a boat and he was teaching people on the shore and they all could hear him, man. All right. The, the Lord had a he was a very austere man. All right. So he weren't walking around whispering, talking about Simon, Simon, Satan of desire to have thee. No, no. He was. Look, man, the Lord spoke with austere and he basically he spoke with bass because a man has bass in his voice, man. This society that we're in today it teaches you to go around and be all timid and shit, especially over here in London, man. All right. Over here in London, you people get offended. <clears throat> One of the brothers was telling me he was in a queue once and um, he just he, he uttered a word and he's got a deep voice. And the, the woman in front of him, oh, she jumped from just one word, man. Over here, you people are fucking fickle, man. All right. And that's another thing that I that that that's the reason why I want this place to be destroyed. Cause Jake, Jake, uh, Jake are loud, man. Jake are lively, and Jake wanna actually make noise, man. Jake wanna get down. I we're in a, we're so oppressed from all angles. It's unbelievable. All right. So that's the point on that. It says, "Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm." When you sound an alarm, you set an alarm. You know you don't want the alarm to be all like, "Wake up." You know, the, the alarm's got to be fucking ringing, man, so that you can get your get your ass out of bed, because, you know, we got to go to work and punch in, in the clock to work for this damn devil. Uh, otherwise, you might, you know, you might turn up late, and then you might get put on disciplinary and lose your job. All right, so you want an alarm to be ringing, man, especially alarm that's going to alert you for time of war and a time of death and destruction, which is nigh at hand, all right, because it says, for the day of the Lord cometh, Yahweh cometh, and it is nigh at hand, all right, and that's the reason why we sound the alarm. And let's go to Isaiah, man, because you guys, man, you know, where do you get off? Where do you where do you get off? All right. Where do you have the balls and the courage plucked up inside that puny, puny body of yours to come up to the camp, to come up to the men of the Lord and tell us how to run our program? If you don't like it, take your ass down the street, man. Uh, we didn't ask you to come up here and listen to what we got to say. We're out here for the elected our people, of our people, man, that are going to repent and receive the engrafted word which is able to save their souls. We don't give a shit about you effeminate faggots out there, man. And first and foremost, the Lord said the effeminate weren't even going to make it into the kingdom of heaven, man. So you guys are going to have to be put to the side. All right? This is Isaiah 58 and 1. It says, cry aloud. Woo! Right there, man. It says, cry aloud. Don't say whisper now. Whisper and tell these people. No, cry aloud and spare not. Lift up thy voice. Okay, here we go. Like a trumpet. Just, just like what we read in Joel, the, the second chapter. All right, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy, holy mountain. And why do we do this? It says, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. All right, so we got to let our people know that they were going off. Because the thing is, first and foremost, man, when you got a guy... Like, let's say, for example, you're trying to raise a son and you're all trying to, you know, he's do, he's doing all, all kinds of wickedness, coming all hours and, you know, basically uh, you told him to do something, he didn't do it. And the way you're going to scold him or tell him off or you're going to show him his transgression underneath your roof is to be like, son, you shouldn't be doing stuff like that. No, you got to come hard. You got to put fear in him, man. You got to let him know that he's going to get his ass bust if he does anything like that again, because that's that's how you that's that's real love. You're showing uh, love for your neighbor, man. You're showing love to your brothers, man. All right, all right. And the select sisters that are out there that are hearing this word, we're putting, we're putting them on blast. 
all right? We're getting that mirror and we're shining it in their face and saying, take a good half, good long look at yourself and compare it to, 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 to in, uh, and compare it to the way of how you're supposed to be carrying yourself as a child of the Most High, man, all right? As an Israelite, all right? As a son of the living power, man, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta let our people know, man. All right, because that's what Israel means, Yasha Allah, which means he is a prince of God or he is a son of God. So you gotta understand that our people, man, they don't even wanna, cons they don't consider, they don't wanna know, man, their transgression. They're still headlong in their wickedness. That's why, and you even had an account in Acts seven. That's why they stoned Stephen, man. They stoned him because they, they they gnashed on him with their teeth and they stoned him because he was cutting them, cutting them to the core, man. In fact, let me get that precept real quick, okay? In fact, let me finish this off and let's say, And show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. And this is what Stephen was doing, man. Alright, so let's go to Acts 7. I'm going to start from... Um, it's quite deep in it. <clears throat> Here we go, verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Basically, man, Stephen came out and he was like, look, man, you're deaf and you're blind, man. All right? You're stiff-necked. You don't want to listen. Hey, Jeremiah, he was coming raw, man. All right? Jeremiah was coming raw. He was saying my bowels and my bowels, man. You know, he, this word, man, this word has got to make you move, man, with passion. All right? And passion links up with suffering. Suffering links up with pain. If you ain't in pain in this society... Looking at all the things that are going on, going on around you. If you're not vexed by the filthy conversation of the wicked, then there's something wrong with you, man. We're standing up against evil times. We're standing up against unrighteousness. We're standing up against wickedness, man. All right? The prophets that have been before me, before thee of old, prophesied both against great kingdoms of war, evil, and pestilence, man. All right? And, 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 and the Lord laid places like Sodom and Gomorrah, into ash, man, as an example that those should after live ungodly. So that's what we do. So what are we supposed to whisper that? All right, we know the ICBM nuclear missiles are coming. Are we supposed to be timid about it? Are we supposed to tiptoe around the subject, man? Or are we supposed to warn our people? All right, it says, it says, you stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So did, so do ye. So Stephen was getting on them, man. All right, he was getting on them. All right, um, there you go. This is the point. Then they cried out with a loud voice. Yeah, they cried out with a loud voice, man. They stopped their ears and they ran upon him with one accord. So they were all in unison, man. They were like, "Get him, man! Fuck him up!" And that's the same thing that these big buck, corn-fed, big bread niggers would like to do to us out here today, man. They want to run up on us with one accord. Last week, we were teaching out there on the, on the chief place of concourse, man. Hey, man, two weeks in a row, people be throwing pennies and shit at us, man. Coins at us, man. And then just dipping. All right? Little faggots, man. Hey, but the Lord said, man, that we were going to be made a spectacle. We're out there on front line, man. We're out there presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, man. Especially when you're in a situation like that. And you're speaking. You've got readers reading for you. Adrenaline's pumping. The spirit's moving within you, man. You want to you wanna go all out, man. You know? You want to go all out, you, you know, through, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. This is passion. We ain't in this for fun, man. All right. It says, then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. All right. So if 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 if, if Stefan was was coming all timid and he weren't cutting them uh, and he weren't basically, you know, uh, prophesying smooth things like what the scriptures mocks them them false prophets for doing man he weren't prophesying smooth things he was telling it like it is man all right it says and he stoned him all right so that's the point on that man and let me go back to um in fact let me get another precept isaiah i'm gonna get isaiah 28 <coughs> yeah because you guys man you you man you guys don't seem to understand um the Lord is hey, the Lord is gonna get you niggas, man. You scoffers and you scorners, man. It says Isaiah twenty eight and eleven. All right. It says for stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. How is the Lord speaking to his people, man? Through his prophets. All right. 
The Lord puts the words into our mouth what we're going to say and we go out there through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and we cry aloud and we spare not. And we get on our people, man. We let them know that if they don't repent, they're going to be destroyed. We let all the other nations know that they're going into slavery for what they did to our nation. What's so bad about that? If you're an Israelite, that's, a, hey, that's good news to you, man. But the scripture says that the gospel, which means good news, if the gospel is hid, is hid to them that are lost, all right? Because the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that shouldn't believe. Okay? Now, I'm going to go into this word stammering right here because this is very interesting. I was watching an old video from the apostles um, and they brought, basically brought out this word. And the word in the Hebrew there is la'aig. All right? La'aig. And it says mocker. All right? It says a, or, or a mocking. Okay? And when you go into it, it says speaking in a barbarous or foreign tongue. Uh... The people of a strange language, it says a jester or a buffoon, a mocker. So we get on our people, man. We let them know, man. You big butt, mighty men, corn-fed niggas, man. That's a mocking, that's a mocking tone right there, man. Alright? Barbarous. Alright? We mock you, man. Alright? Because what's your what's your what's your big ass mo oh yeah, I can push. You can know how much I can push in the gym, fam. What's that gonna do for you in the time of Jacob's trouble, man? When you can't feed your fat ass, man? Then what you gonna do? All right, it says a jester, a buffoon. But I want to go into this word uh, barbarous right here. All right, you go into this word barbarous. In fact, let me get it on the. Um, so I'm gonna get it on the etym online. Uh, Salaki, give me a sec. So barbarous etymology. Study of study of the truth and the meaning of words, man. Word etymology, baby. That's what we do. Over here at Great Millstone, we bring these words to life. Okay, it says, all right, so barbarous from the 14th century, it says, un, and this is from etymonline.com. All right, it says, uncivilized, uncultured, ignorant. All right, we mock, we go on like, hey man, we basically tell you how ignorant you are, man. All right, but we come, we come with that, hey man, you, you know, that contrary, we, you don't even know what we're going to do next, man. All right, it says, strange, foreign, barbarous, it says, uh, foreign, un, uh, uncivilized. It says savagery. All right, that of savagery or cruel. All right, so we're supposed to be coming cruel and savage, man. We ain't sparing. We ain't mincing words, man. All right. In fact, they throw, they tried to throw Yahweh Shai off the cliff, man. And the scripture says that he had to pass through the midst of them. What does that mean? All right. So you got to understand. That, look, man. When when these words when these there was there was forty forty wicked ass big buck Jakes. That bound themselves under a curse, all right, and said that they weren't going to eat or drink unless they killed Paul, man. Why? Because Paul was coming rough. Paul was coming savage and cruel, man. All right, Paul was giving them what's what. Let's let's get let's get this real quick. Let's get this um preset. I'm gonna close out on this, man. I don't want to make this too long. I just wanted to get get a couple of um get a couple of precepts in there, man. Uh. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians eleven and six, it says, "Though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge." All right, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. All right, so you got to understand that Paul said, "Look, man, look, I may though I be rude in speech, but yet not in knowledge." It doesn't. It shouldn't matter how. Uh, a brother is uh, breaking down the word to you, man. As long as you get the message, as long as he ain't going off the doctrine, as long as he ain't adding or subtracting from the words in the book, as long as he ain't deviating from the gospel, man, the good news, all right, from the volume. It's like, if you ain't doing that, then what's the problem? All right, because you got different brothers with different spirits, man. Certain brothers, they come hard and certain brothers, they come a bit more soft. But at the same time, man, them same soft um, look, um, sounding brothers, when they're ready to turn up, they're ready to turn up because everything is done in balance. The Lord made everything in balance, man. All right. And it's the same thing for the for the brothers that might seem turned up at the camps. At, at other times, they might just be quiet, man, and just chilled. Because that's also balanced, man. And they know how to reason with brothers. It's not every time they come off, you know, all right, so brothers ain't off, you know, hey, they, they come from the camp and then they're just like, you know, they, they always reason with, yeah, brother, so what I'm saying is this, bro, and you got to let this pre, you know, brothers don't be doing that. The scripture says be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. However, when you're at war on the front lines, man, you got to be, you know, you, you bring it, all right? And it, it's not about the tone, but it's the, it's, it's, it's the speech, 
All right, and the power of the speech is not just about the speech, but it's the power in the speech, all right, which is which comes from the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai and from these scriptures, man. All right, so though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, man. That's what Paul said. So you got to understand that stammering lips in another tongue, we might be jesting, we might be mocking, we might be acting like buffoons. All right, but we're coming in that barbarous, savagery, cruel, because really and truly, man, that's how the prophets of old came, man. All right, that's how the prophets of old came. Let's get an account in um, Jeremiah. In fact, let's get Ezekiel, man. Ezekiel, because this place is this place is disgusting, man. Here it is. We got we got to watch you people walking around, and 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 giving bravery awards out to people like Bruce Jenner, man. All right, our children got to grow up and see this shit. All right, you you know if you discipline your child in a way that is not deemed fit within the law. Of the so-called white man. Then they can come and take your children away. Then they're going to put them in social services. Next thing you know. Two faggots are raising your child man. Then what are you going to do? Now you're behind bars. You know. Serving time. You know. This place man. We are oppressed. We are yet. Behold. We are yet this day in our captivity man. And that's something for you niggas to just soak on that man. Alright. Think on that. Alright. We are hella oppressed. And the scripture says. Surely oppression make of a wise man mad. If a man. If a wise man is mad. Then what, you think he's always going to be coming soft, man, and shitting? You know, I'm really angry at the moment. You know, really, truly, man, you got to come rough. Ezekiel 9 and 4, it says, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city and through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Now, if you're a man that's sighing and crying, are you in a good mood? All right, the scripture says, Hey, man, let your joy be turned to sorrow, man. Right? We're in the time of mirth. The scripture says, should we then make mirth in Ezekiel 21? All right. So we're in the time of mirth, man. The men of the Lord are going to be sighing and crying. They're going to be hastening the day because we want to get the fuck out of here, man. Excuse my French. All right. So my, my point is, men that sigh and cry, they ain't always going to be, you know, happy-go-lucky. They ain't going to be talking soft all the time. They've got things on their mind, man, and they want to get off. And, that, you know, we go out to the camp every week and, you know, the conditions that we have to to go through out there, being exposed to the elements, man, going through the demonic battles throughout the week. This is our one chance to curse this place out, man, and let you people stop repenting. Because the Lord said if all of our people was to turn to the east and, and pray and call upon his name, man, then look, man, this place, Esau's kingdom will be done through. But our people ain't doing that, man. So we got to look, man. We constantly get on our people because the Lord said so, man. And we ain't got a problem with that. Right, the Lord puts puts uh, the the spirit in us to go and do it. It's it because the, the scripture says, "Man's goings are of the Lord." How then can a man understand his own way? This isn't of our own will, but of the Lord's will. Okay. It says, and to the others, he said in mine hearing, "Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have you pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any." Any man upon whom is the mark, and that mark in the Hebrew is Thawara or Thawa, which means a mark of exemption from judgment. Alright, so you gotta understand that the Lord is saying, slay utterly, old and young. Spirit speaking through Ezekiel here, man. Alright? So if we're gonna be calling a scripture like this out on the highways and the byways, man, these these scriptures ain't getting read out in the churches. Why? Because they're too grim for them. They're too savage, they're too barbarous, they're too cruel. But we come raw. We come raw, we're live and direct, man. We don't prophesy smooth things. We come raw with the scriptures, man. We don't pick and choose what chapter and what book to read, man. All right? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, we bring it to you straight, man. All right? Now, that's my point, man. So, hey, all, all praises to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. All right? Stammering lips in another tongue, baby. That's how we go and speak to this, to this people, man, through the spirit. All right? That's how our forefathers do it. Hey, and the scripture says, man, the things... In fact, let me get that to close out on, man. Uh, Romans chapter 15 and 4. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now, what was a part of the scriptures... Reading about Stefan and how he got stoned by them wicked ass niggas, man. Reading about the 40 men that bound themselves under a curse for the Apostle Paul. Alright? Reading about what they did to our Lord, Yahweh Shai, man. How they smote and they slapped him about and said, Prophesy who smote you, man. Alright? Now, a guy that's passionate 
about what he's going through and passionate about the scriptures, a passionate about our Lord Yahweh Shai, man, then you think he's going to be happy all the time? No, he ain't, man. So fuck you effeminate faggots, man, you 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 weak ass niggas, man, especially you guys over here in London, man. You ain't gonna make it. You gonna catch a fucking missile, man. So with that, man, I'ma say shalom.